Mauricio in Monterey, Mexico writes to me, Paul, I've seen your videos on clocks, but I'd love to go deeper because this is the, one of the most puzzling areas in digital audio for me. Here's what I'm trying to figure out. In a typical setup with a streamer feeding a DAC, which clock is actually in charge? Am I mainly using the DAC's clock, the streamer's clock, or both? And does the connection type decide that? For example, if I use I2S, does the DAC follow the streamer's clock? With USB, is it always the DAC's clock in control? Well, yeah. So let's let's go back to the to the beginning. The CD player, the CD transport. In that case, so however you're connecting, whether you're through uh, a optical cable connecting your CD transport or maybe just your CD player with its digital output and coax, however you're connecting it up to your DAC, that CD player is the master clock. And that's one of the reasons why, and it's telling and controlling the DAC, okay? The DAC gets its clock from the source. And so years ago when we introduced the first series of transports that had a digital lens inside and they were so extraordinarily better than anything else out there. One of the things that we really liked to do was to show, we used to call them memory players, and the reason we called them memory players was because you could literally start playing a disc in that transport and pull the disc out and the music continues to play. I did that often and people were like, whoa, whoa, I, it, whoa what's going on here? What was happening was this digital lens was basically a, a memory, a buffer, okay? And we took the data that is going up and down and moving around and is full of jitter and all kinds of stuff that we don't want, timing stuff, clock stuff, that is not good. Because what you want is fixed clock. You want it no jitter, moving around back, back and forth, and a fixed frequency. You don't want something that is shifting slightly to keep up with when it comes in faster or when it goes out slower, that kind of thing, right? So what you do is you just you, you make a, a holding tank, this memory, and you start filling up the bits. And when you hit play, it takes eh, one second delay. It's filling up, and then it starts outputting perfectly with a fixed clock. And that fixed clock becomes the master clock for the DAC. And the DAC enjoys perfect timed clock with no jitter coming out of the source. And that's true for a streamer, for anything else. All right, so that's way back when. Today, most DACs get their main source again from the source and then they take over and they reclock it. Most modern DACs do that. Now a lot of chip-based DACs don't, so uh, they're still relying on the source as the master clock. But any DAC that we've built, if you take the PMG Signature DAC or the DirectStream uh, DAC, we take that data, we store it in another digital lens and say, thanks, thanks for the clock, appreciate it, but we don't trust you and we make a DAC that we are guaranteeing is going to sound a certain way. And in order to do that, I can't rely on the source to provide a good signal. So we're not going to do it. We don't trust you. We trust us. And so we are reclocking everything. And we do it multiple times in our DACs just to get everything perfect. But the, the tradition, the system is the source provides the clock. Okay? I hope that helps. Thanks.